In July 2017, Turkey signed the deal to acquire the S-400 air defense system from Russia in spite of intense opposition from the US and NATO. It received its first installment of the Russian S-400 missile defense system on the 12th of July 2019. Turkey had insisted that since it currently had only the Cold War era surface-to-air missile systems, it required an upgrade and S-400 fits in perfectly. Erdogan was quoted by NTV as saying, one S-300 is worth three Patriots. If the conditions are even equal to the S-400 deal, we would buy Patriots, but if they are not, then we have to think of our interests. Turkey was ejected from the F-35 program due to this, since it was felt that the move could compromise the stealth fighter, as through S-400, Russia may be able to gather technical data, such as the radar signature of F-35, as well as gain access to the cloud-based, multinational, Autonomic Logistics Information System ALICE, which has critical mission data and flight routes. Many experts had suggested that Turkey was playing a double game and actively trying to weaken NATO from the inside, but Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan seems to have left Russia high and dry when it really mattered. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how Turkey has ditched Russia at a crucial time. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air, and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer all Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. Over the past few months, many clips have emerged on the social media platform showing Turkish combat drones Bayraktar TB2 destroying Russian tanks and convoys as President Putin's forces tried to make inroads into Ukraine. Ukraine's Ministry of Defense has put up footage of the Bayraktar combat drones wreaking havoc on Russian forces. The drone is thought to have played a crucial role in the sinking of the Russian Black Sea Fleet flagship Moskva when it was used to distract the air defense of the warship as Neptune anti-ship missiles hurled toward it. The Bayraktar TB-2 is an armed, medium-altitude, long-endurance, male, unmanned combat aerial vehicle UCAV, capable of remotely controlled or autonomous flight operations. It's manufactured by the Turkish company Baykar Defense, primarily for the Turkish Armed Forces, and is developed from TB-1. The drone is monitored and controlled by aircrew in the ground control station, including weapons employment, via Turksat satellite. The drone now has a cult-like following in Ukraine. Recently, the Turkish defense manufacturer Baykar said it had turned down $20 million in crowdfunded cash to buy its drones for Ukraine and will donate three military drones to the country instead. It's important to note here that President Recep Tayyip Erdogan's son-in-law is a top director of Baykar Defense and at least the discretionary donations could have been easily avoided. It's evident that Erdogan is not making life easy for Putin. Russian and Turkish news outlets reported that Mr. Putin led Erdogan to Su-57, which is developed by Sukhoi, at the annual MAX 2019 air show at Zhukovsky International Airport outside Moscow. According to the Associated Press, Erdogan looked into the cockpit of the Su-57 and asked whether it was available for sale. Mr. Putin is said to have smiled and said, yes, you can buy it. Turkey's Hurriyet newspaper reported that Erdogan and Putin also had a private conversation for over an hour. 
but the latest news shows a major shift in stance. While Su-57 and Su-35 fighters were initially thought to be strong contenders to replace the aging fleet of F-16s, especially the older Block 30 models after it was ejected from the F-35 program, it has now come to light that it is no longer planning to purchase any of the Russian fighters. Ankara has now expressed interest in the Eurofighter Typhoon fighter jets instead, according to Russian journalists who have knowledge of the topic. This is undoubtedly a major setback for Moscow, which has been actively looking for a partner for investment after India moved out of the Su-57 program, citing fundamental design flaws. Russia accounts for nearly 19% of worldwide weapons shipments. However, according to the latest Stockholm International Peace Research Institute CIPRI, report titled Trends in International Arms Transfers, Russian arms exports fell by 26% between 2012 and 2016, followed by a steep fall in its global share from 24% to 19% between 2017 and 2021. Turkey's rejection couldn't have come at a worse time for Russia. Finland and Sweden, the two Nordic nations, announced their intention to join NATO in May in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. NATO Secretary General Mr. Stoltenberg had suggested the process could move very quickly as they already shared a close relationship with the alliance. Turkey had objected to this. It accused the two countries of protecting Kurdish militants and said it would not back their membership. Any NATO enlargement must be approved by all 30 members. Sweden and Finland could not join NATO without Turkey's support. But now the situation has changed. The two countries have agreed to some of Turkey's demands, and militants will face a crackdown under amendments to Swedish and Finnish law. In return, Turkey has agreed to support Nordic nations' membership of the alliance. President Erdogan of Turkey, President Sali Ninistro of Finland, and Prime Minister Magdalena Andersson of Sweden met in Madrid on Tuesday, the 28th of June, 2022, along with NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg. In that meeting, the leaders agreed on a trilateral memorandum to address Turkey's legitimate security concerns, paving the way for Finland and Sweden's NATO membership. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.